Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. With Christmas time approaching, it's time for the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge, and it is underway. We already have submissions to it that are great, and I expect a whole lot more great submissions before we're done the end of November. That's the deadline, end of November. Meanwhile, here's one from me. This is a ornament made of cherry. It is hollowed out to lighten it and it has wood burning or py pyrography on the outside. So this will be my first entry to this year's Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. Too bad I can't win anything because I'm one of the judges. So let's make this Christmas Ornament. My first order of business with this cherry is to cut a tenon on each end. I'll need to be able to chuck the wood from either end. I'll use a bedan for a peel cut and a skew to clean it up and to form a dovetail. But I really don't need this much wood, so I'll estimate the length plus a little bit to spare. But rather than just part it off, I'll cut a tenon on the new end right now while it's still attached. I'll, I'll need one later. Now I'm reducing the diameter with a bedan a great tool for a peeling cut. Then mark off a bulb in the middle before cutting the wood in half with a parting tool. Now with one half in the lathe, I'll start my hollowing. I really do not care whether it is a top or a bottom at this point. I do care that I will cut a mortise in the first half. I plan to hollow both halves, then glue them back together. A small mortise and tenon will help the wood align and provide a good glue surface. I'll use a gouge for hollowing, followed by a round nose scraper to finish up. Now it's time for the tenon. Seems that it's always easier to fit a tenon to a mortise rather than a mortise to a tenon. If I cut a tenon a trifle small, I can move down the wood a little and try again. If I cut a mortise too large, the wood is gone, and life is rough. After the tenon fits, I'm hollowing this half the same as the other half. Then after marking my grain alignment, I can glue the two halves together and let them dry overnight. Now to carefully form the outside. I have to respect my depth markings. I want it to be as close to a perfect sphere as possible. But since it will never be a sphere on its own, I only need to be close. So I will not go through the process for a perfect sphere. It's not hard, but also not necessary. After all that gouge work, I'm finishing up with my skew as a scraper. The top is simple and integral to the wood. After sanding to 400 grit, I need to pause and not forget to drill a hanger hole. I really hate it when I forget until after it's off the lathe. Now for decoration. I plan to wood burn portions of the ornament, but not all. So I'm cutting several V grooves for separation and a little visual interest, then part it off. For wood burning, I'll use my new vaporizer modeled after Graham Priddle's recommendation. I'll post a video on my vaporizer construction shortly. One issue with wood burning is the smoke staining. Since I'm not burning all of it, I'm masking off areas that I will not touch with the burner. Now for burning. I'll first use two homemade tips. The first is a spiral. I'll burn a band of spirals between one set of V-grooves. Next I'll swap for a chain tip 
and fill another band with diagonal chains. That was not enough, so I swapped over to a ball tip and burned some random dots around the spirals and the chain burns. When finished, I again sanded the burned areas with 400 grit sandpaper to remove soot and expose more wood grain. Finally, I need a wire loop. I chucked up a Harbor Freight transfer punch in a Jacobs chuck. I could have used a drill bit, but since I have a cheap set of these transfer punches, I can avoid the risk of cutting my fingers on drill flutes. A good solid base makes bending the wire much easier. A vice grip on one end of the wire helps a lot. Next time, I'll get another pair of vice grips and grab both ends of the wire. It helps to keep a lot of tension on the wire. Then squeeze the windings tight for a better look. After finishing with shellac friction polish and a little buffing, I finished my ornament. With the hollowing, it's nice and light. With the burned texture, it feels good. It has a nice heft and feel. I'll show this in this year's Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. It's time for you to dust off your video camera and make your ornament video. Last year's challenge was fantastic. With that, we'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. I love feedback via your comments. Please like this video, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.